Amen. Bwana asifiwe. As you have heard, my name is Washo Wamwagi, and I love Jesus. Please have your seats. Munaeza simbama mpaka nimalize. And this morning, I love Jesus. Bwana asifiwe. My desire is one that I may know him. Bwana asifiwe. When Paul was just about to exit from the world, his prayer was one that he may know Christ. Bwana asifiwe. And that is my prayer this morning and my desire that I may continually know the one that saved me. Amen. To dad and mom, I want to say I am honored this morning for allowing me to step on this pulpit this morning. I have been on this pulpit to do many, many things, but I've never been here to share the word. So this morning I'm feeling humbled and honored, dad and mom, that you have trusted me with this pulpit. When they were beginning, I don't want to tell you which class I was. Buona asifiwe. So it is a real, real honor. Amen. And thank you, Simon. This man has lived with me for 25 years and 11 months by yesterday. And for those who know me, you know I'm not a very easy person to live with. That is my covenant brother Kebera saying yes. But imagine he has lived with me for all those years. He has loved me. He has spoiled me. Buona asifiwe. I am forever grateful, Simon. And to my relatives that are in the house. Yes, those are my relatives. Buona asifiwe. That is Pastor Rea and Reverend Francis. And my big sister, Pastor Beatrice. Thank you. And my covenant brother, Pastor Kebera. Thank you. Now some of you are wondering, when did Kebera become your brother? Whether he was born in Nyeri and I was born in a place called Kinagop, he remains my brother. Na hiyo haibadiriki. Amen. And to my friends, thank you. Because I am a total sum of all the experiences and interactions I have had with every one of you. Buona asifiwe. And to the ushers, the team in red and black, God bless you this morning. Amen? Because my husband has prayed for me, I want to go straight to the word, and this is express, so we're not, I'm not going to keep you. Isaiah 59, verse 19. If we can have it projected. Pastor Alice calls me, Superfryer. So if they don't project to Tainderea, let's read together. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the, Lord, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Tell your neighbor. The spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Second Corinthians 12, verse chapter 8. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 8, verse 8 and 9. This is Paul speaking. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice. Tell your neighbor, not once, not twice, but thrice, that it might depart from me. Verse 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in wit in weakness. Most gladly therefore I would rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Buona asifiwe. You can write in the title this morning for, that, for my message but I want to call it the storms of life. Buona asifiwe. Buona asifiwe. And those two verses above there has shown that once in a while we all go through a storm. Buona asifiwe. And I also can assure you, if you're not in one, it is coming. And you can also be in multiple of them. You can be going through a major storm 
And in between, you can also go through so many other small storms. But what is a storm? It is a season of rack. It is a season of inner and outward loneliness. It is times when sicknesses strike and we don't know what to do. It is those seasons that we fear the unknown. It can be a season when we really feel oppressed. During storms, we feel tossed about. But during storms, it can also become a time of our testing. It can be a time for our molding. It can be a time of our training. Many times when we read the book of Job, and we, we look at Job and we see a great, mighty man of integrity. But when we, care, we come to the point of the wife, we start demonizing her. But this morning, I want us to look at Job's wife differently. Amen? She looks at the husband in the book of Job 2, 9, and he asks, are you still holding on to your precious integrity? Cast God and die. And sometimes when we are looking at her, we start thinking, what an evil wife she was. But this morning, I want us to look at her differently. She had lost everything. The wealth they had worked so much for. But that was not important to her. She had lost her ten precious children one morning. And therefore, when she's looking at Job, she's wondering, Man, you are still holding on to this God. Curse him and let us all perish because there was loneliness. She had started losing hope. Her anchor was not holding anymore. And this morning, you could be in this service. And you're going through a storm. And people are wondering, Washo, you are still holding on to serving God? You are still holding on to coming very early in church? You are still holding on loving this God? When people go through storms, they can lose it. They can lose it. Last year, I went through so many things. I was going through one major storm, and there were so many other storms that came up. I lost people that I loved, one after another. And one person asked me, So I know that when, if you're not careful when we're going through a storm, we can lose hope and we can lose our focus. Storms mostly will come in after a very major achievement. If you read the story of Job, the Bible says, that he was brimless. He was upright. He feared God. And if you read the story, you can see a very stable man. But one morning, one morning, everything started crumbling down. When we read the story of Elijah, after he had such a good experience at Mount Carmel, he ran and he ran and all he wanted was for him to die. And I want to challenge you this morning. When you hear people, they want to give up. Please understand where they are coming from. Understand where they are coming from. Amen. Elijah, who was such a big, we could be calling him a bishop if he was in our time. But he was about to lose it because there was a charge in his life. But I like what the Bible says in the book of Romans 8. That in all these things, we are more than conquerors. And if God is for us, then who 
can be and gain the stars. Bwana asifiwe. I can assure you, storms will come. I have said that. Sicknesses will come. We will go through a season of lack. We will go through a season of contending with sin. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. We will be going through shame and ridicule. Last year, I got into one of those storms. Maybe some of you don't know, others knew. My daughter became pregnant. And she was in the prison worship. She was in Pastor Mirison's team. And every Sunday as I woke up to come to church, I wondered, will I still hold on? When I see few and brethren didn't make it easy for me. But I want to thank God this morning. When I see few, that out of those experiences, the Lord taught me something. And that is what I want to share with you this morning. When I see few, that the purpose of our storms it's not for us to perish. It is for us to be strengthened. It is for us to be increased. When I see few, next time, and I pray that God forbids, if your daughter becomes pregnant, you can come running to me. There will be a shoulder for you to cry upon. I will give you a few tips on how to survive the storm. When I see few, when Moses kills somebody and runs, into the Ethiopian desert. He went there alone and he stayed in a storm. But as he was leaving the nation of Ethiopia, he was not alone. He was not empty. The Lord had increased him. But as if he, were, he had a beautiful wife, he had two sons. He had a great father in law who was full of wisdom that Moses was ne going to need in his later time as he read the Israelites. And above all, one as if he were, he had had the training to go and lead the children of Israel. He had taken care of sheep. I was thinking about Moses because he was a man of temper. That was my big brother. One as if he were, and he could only have been trained how to sober up at the back of a desert, taking care of sheep. I don't know how many of you know how stupid sheep are. Eh? I, am a, I come from a place where we rear sheep. Because they are slow. Kamoja kakifanya makosa, zote zinafanya nini? Zinafuatana. Sazingine zirikuwa zinanibeba. Because I used to be really annoyed with them. Bwana asifiwe. And for... Yes, Kebera is saying that is true. Yes, because they can be very annoying. But imagine God knew that the only place that Moses would run to sober up was at the back of the desert where he's taking care of the annoying animals called sheep. Bwana apewe sifa. So, as you go through storms, always remember the desire of God is that you be in Christ. When I see few, you can be sure this morning I am stronger than I was last year. Amen. And I am wiser. Amen. I am more wiser than I, I was last year. Friends, most of our storms, I also learned, are permission granted. It's not that you have done anything. Remember, Job was the most upright man. He could have been our pastor if it was our time. The Bible says he was brimless. He was upright. He feared God and he shunned evil. But yet, the biggest storm is what Job went through. Because the enemy had asked for permission. And Jesus speaking to Simon, he tells Simon, 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 you tell yourself, washo, washo. Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. That is Luke 22, verse 31 and verse 32. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you, to sift all of you as wheat. But I have prayed for you. Simon, that your faith may not fail. 
And when you have turned back, strengthen your brethren. So the other reason why we go through the storms is so that we can be the strong shoulder our brethren can rely on. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. So when you go through a storm, it's not for you. It is for the others. So when you have turned back, don't hide. Don't run away. Know that you are being you are strengthened so that you can be strength to someone else. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 to 5 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comfort us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as we share abundantly in the suffering of Christ, so also our comfort abounds in Christ Jesus. So always remember, once permission granted, hold on. Go through the storm. And when you have turned around, strengthen the brethren. And because of this express service, I want to share three things for us to do when we get into a storm so that our faith does not fail. Hebrews 12, verse 2 and 3. This is usually my favorite chapter, the, chap the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Fixing our eyes. Yes, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse 3. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. When we are going through a storm, let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. Amen. Job 19 verse 25 and 27 says, For I know, hallelujah, for I know my Redeemer reveth. When Job had gone through everything, he looked up to heaven and said, For I know my Redeemer revered. When as if you were, and after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. Second Timothy first one and twelve says. That is, why I'm, that is why I'm suffering as I am. Yet this no cause for shame because I know whom I have believed in. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm convinced that he is able to guard that which I have entrusted to him until the day. Why Job and Paul could stand the test of time, brethren? It is because they knew whom they had believed in. They knew their Savior. They could hold on to him when the going got extremely tough. So when you're going through a, a storm, fix your eyes on Jesus Christ. Number two, become a worshiper. Become Revelation chapter 1. Verse 9 to 10. This is John the Reverator. One as if he were. And he was banished into the Irad of Patimos. And this was a very bad Irad. It was rocky. It was so windy. It is one Irad that had no trees. But in there, hallelujah, in the Irad of Patimos, verse 9 says, I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and 
and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus was in the era of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Verse 10. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. John knew that he was alone and he was all alone. But he refused to focus on his tomb. One verse says that I was in prayer. He decided to worship the Lord Jesus. And remember, he was one of the disciples. So he knew who Christ was. And therefore he decided to be on his face down, worshipping the king of kings. And you can be sure that is why we have the book of Revelation. The Lord revealed to him what was to come. He refused to focus on his storm. He refused to focus on his pain, but decided to worship the king of kings. King Jehoshaphat, when he was surrounded by an army that he knew he could not fight, when he inquired of the Lord, he was told, Put me sent and the team before the army. Hallelujah! And you can be sure they won the battle. Brethren, this morning I want to tell you there is something that happens when we dare step into the hurry of holies. When we are going through a storm and we refuse to focus on our pain and we dare step into the hurry of holies. There are things that happen. Buona asifiwe, judgment are changed. The cases are decided in our favor. Esther dared this and Israel was saved. Buona asifiwe. And finally, surround yourself with the right people. Surround yourself with the... The Bible says in Exodus 17 verse 11... As long as Moses had, was held up, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his head, the Amalekites were, were winning. When Moses had grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. Elon and who held his head up, one on one side and one on the other side, so that his head remained steady till sunset. And that meant victory for the children of Israel. This morning, when you're going through a storm, surround yourself with arrows. Look for your ooze. So that they can lift your heart up. But I also want to challenge you to be an arrow to somebody. I want you to challenge you to be a wood to somebody. Buona asifiwe. When I think about Job's wife, I think, where were the neighbors? Where were the red coordinators of her time? Where were the cell leaders of her time? No wonder she was losing hope. No wonder she was feeling like she wanted to give up. When you're going through a storm, it is important that you identify you, you identify your arrows and your hoes. Because they will help you go through the storm. When I was going through many, many storms last year, somebody said, asked me, Those are not arrows, neither are they surround yourself with the right people. People that can hold your heart up. When Elijah was running, the Bible says there were many other prophets. And I wondered, where were they when their bishop was losing hope? This morning I want to ask you, where were you when somebody was giving it up? Are you there for our parents? Are you there for your cell leader? Are you there for the ladies coordinator? Are you there for that member of your cell? Are you there for your neighbors? I want to challenge you this morning that you also arise and become a who and you become a Narun. And as I bring my sharing to conclusion, I want to say this, that we have a promise. Amen? We have a promise. As I said before, 
His desire is not for us to perish in the storm, but for us to be strengthened. Psalm 61 verse 2, I don't want us to read, I want us to read for you. It says, from the head of the earth, Psalm 61 verse 2, from the head of the earth will I cry unto thee, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to that lock that is higher than I. He knew we would be going through storms, brethren. And he provided a way of escape. And this morning, I want to encourage you. You're going through a storm. There is a rock that is higher than you. Bonas, if you were, Isaiah 43, verse 2 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. They will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Buena Sifiwe. He is our righteous strong tower. We can run to him every single day. Buena Sifiwe. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 3, verse 25, this is when Daniel and his friends were put in the furnace. And the Bible says that the king looked, and this was his answer. Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no heart. And the form of the fourth one looks like the son of God. This morning, my parting shot is this, that he is with you in the storm. He is with you in the storm. Buona Sifiwe, the son of God, the author and the finisher of our faith is walking with you in the storm. You may not see him, but I can assure you the reason I'm standing this morning before you is because he walked with me through the storm. Buona Sifiwe, that is why I have a voice this morning, that I came to encourage you this morning. But it doesn't matter how hard the storm is. 